Hello, my name is Ben Laverty. I'm with California Safety Training Corporation. Thanks for choosing us to do this monthly class for you. A special welcome to American Dairy Co. Today's class is on hazard communication. It has to do with protection from chemicals. The common chemicals I was seeing at American Dairy Co. in my site visits last week had to do with acids and corrosives um, and also medications, particularly uh, teat dip and also um, those chemicals used around um, water and uh, treatment of water. Uh, first, um, we're going to do introduction and objective. And the first thing I'd like to say about chemicals in and, and this and when I do my classes would be, hey, if you don't touch it and you don't breathe it then um, and you don't get it in your eyes, you will not be affected by chemicals. On the other side of that, most of the time people will tell me that they have smelled chemicals at their workplace and in the teat dip operation that I saw there, obviously you're going to be in close proximity and at some point you will be have some exposure or potential exposure to those. 29 CFR Code of Federal Regulations 1910-1200 uh, says, employees have a right to know any operations in their work area where hazardous chemicals are present. So you need to know where the chemicals are in the workplace and the location and availability of the written hazard communication program and the required list of hazard chemicals, including the material safety data sheets. Um, these, uh, I know, are contained in your IIPP, which have been delivered to you, the hazard communication program. You also need to know where the MSDS sheets are. Typically for your sites, I saw them in the office and also in the milk barn office. The Toxic Substance Control Act is the act that gives the federal government the right to regulate chemicals that come into uh, the states, into the United States. This act uh, started in 1976 and it says that if there's not a medical bulletin or hasn't been, is not an MSDS for a chemical, that if there's an exposure to a new chemical that you're making, that you have to keep records of those for 30 years. Um, typically, American Dairy Co. doesn't have that. It simply is letting you know you're protected from chemicals and um, you'll be using chemicals that have an MSDS and um, have the required information so that you can work safely with them. Hazard communication standard contains three areas that need to be looked at. They simply are the manufacturer's responsibilities, the employer's responsibilities, and the employee's responsibilities. Each of those are similar responsibilities, but the main thing for chemical manufacturers are determine what the chemical's hazards are and provide the label and an MSDS, or SDS as the new standard's going to be. Employers must provide a written hazard communication program, again, in your IIPP, have a current MSDSs or SDSs, and train about hazardous materials. That's why we're doing this class today, to let you know what those are. You as the employee need to read the labels and the SDSs, follow the employer's instructions and warnings, identify hazards before starting a job, and participate in the training. Thanks for participating today, you guys. The chemical hazards uh, are in four areas, flammable, explosive, reactive, and corrosive. For you guys, the main hazard I was seeing going was in corrosives. And um, you'll notice that those that worked in the milk barn, even with the teat dip, the, the chemical would be sometimes on pants and you would see them bleaching out. That, uh, that's where the corrosive nature of that chemical comes in. If you get it on you, the first aid is always rinse with water for 15 to 20 minutes. Health hazards can be acute and chronic. Simply acute hazards happen in a short amount of time. In other words, the example I always use is for smoking cigarettes. If you smoke a cigarette the first time, the acute symptom is coughing. The, if you smoke cigarettes for many years, the chronic symptom is potential lung cancer or emphysema problems with your lungs. The uh, new update for the hazard communication standard um, must be trained before December of 2013. That's coming in December. It's one of the reasons we're doing this monthly class. You have to train on the update of the GHS, which stands for Globally Harmonized System of Classification and Labeling, by, um, by this year because it changes the way that um, manufacturers and distributors in the future will communicate with you about their chemicals. Um, the 
the manufacturers have to reclassify the chemicals and use new GHS labeling by June of 2015. Distributors have to stop using the old labels um, by December of 2015. And by June of 2016, you have to have full compliance. Um, this is the, simply the standardization of labeling and MSDSs throughout the world. Um, the some of the main points that you'll see coming from this is the symbols that are used are going to be consistent. In my mind, it makes it easier for those of us that work around chemicals to really know what the hazards we face are. It's going to standardize the way that SDSs, and before called MSDSs, will now be called SDSs. The GHS standard will cover a chemical from the inception of the chemical all the way to the disposal. So they talk about design, use, manufacture, develop, all these are part of a chemical's lifespan and have to be included in the GHS standard. Simply for you guys, I want you to be aware of these new symbols that are coming from the GHS standard and show you exactly what you're going to see so that you meet the standard by December of 2013. The GHS um, hazard uh, classification section contains uh, information about physical and health hazards. There are 16 physical hazards listed in the GHS standard. Previous to this, we've always said corrosive, flammable, explosive, and reactive. Simply put, these 16 standards can meet in there. And for you guys, what I really was seeing the hazards out there were corrosive and flammable, specifically with fuels. But I want to list the standards. Uh, these um, I want to list out these uh, physical uh, physical hazards. They are one explosives, two flammable gases three flammable aerosols, four oxidizing gases, five gases under pressure, six flammable liquids, seven flammable solids, and all those are, are familiar, and, and even with you guys, you do have some flammable gases on site, your compressed acetylene and compressed oxygen would be considered those, and your flammable um, gases may be, again, acetylene or other uh, um, gases used in torches, your flammable liquids are going to be your gasoline there. Um, others you may not have. I know you don't have explosives or I'm not aware of them or any flammable solids that you had there. The self-reactive substances is number eight, pyrophoric liquids, pyrophoric solids, self-heating substances, substances which in contact with water emit flammable gases, 13 oxidizing liquids, 14 oxidizing solids, 15 organic peroxides, and 16 corrosives to metal. Of those, I didn't recognize that you had any of those. You can look for them, but oxidizing or corrosive to metals is definitely one of those that you have there, and it's also corrosive to you. The health hazards are described in 10 ways. Um, and we simply before talked about acute and chronic. Here, our health hazards talk about acute toxicity. This is, um, happens quickly. Skin corrosion is second. Third, serious eye damage or eye irritation. Fourth is respiratory or skin sensitization. Five, germ cell mutagenicity. Six, carcinogenicity. Seven, reproductive toxicology. Eight, target organ systemic uh, toxicity for a single exposure. And nine, target organ systemic toxicity for repeated exposure and aspiration toxicity. You guys simply looking here, you could take the first two. I'm doing it to be comprehensive so you really get exposed to this GHS standard. But the first two are acute toxicity, skin corrosion, and the third one, serious eye damage. Those may apply to you. We have symbols that we'll show you in a couple minutes that really talk about that. Last part I want to talk about here, or the next part I want to talk about here, are the MSDS, which will now in the future be called SDS. Um, SDS stands for Safety Data Sheet simply before MSDS standard for material safety data sheet. Simple change for us, short and easy. Now though, they're gonna change the way that they look at an MSDS. If you've ever pulled open an MSDS, you know that for each individual company and chemical, you may have a different order or way that they present that information. Here we're gonna have a standard order. It's gonna be in 16 sections, and it starts with one is identification, two is hazard identification, Three is composition information on the ingredients. Four is first aid measures. Five, firefighting measures. Six is accidental release measures. 
Seven is handling and storage. Eight is exposure controls and personal protection. Nine is physical and chemical properties. Ten is stability and reactivity. Eleven is toxicological information. Twelve is ecological information. Thirteen, disposal considerations. Fourteen, transportation information. Fifteen, regulatory information. And sixteen is the catch-all of other information. Again, contains the same things we've always seen. Now we get to see them in a consistent order. Makes it easier for us to read them. Your responsibility as an employee, know where those MSDSs are and be familiar with the hazards in case of emergencies. You can provide them for emergency responders if some emergency happens with those chemicals, a fire or an exposure to people or a significant spill. Next part is the, um, the actual symbols and to me this would be the most important part of really seeing these symbols. Um, one at the top is an exclamation point and that's irritant. Uh, then on the left explosives on the right with the star coming out of the chest is the health hazard uh, you have gas cylinders or compressed cylinders flammables uh, acute toxicity oxidizers corrosives and then finally with the little tree and the fish environmental hazards they all seem pretty um, straightforward and um, they are they are all straightforward and self-explanatory, but you need to look at the symbols and recognize those. For you guys, what you'll see there are health hazards and irritants definitely uh, will be a symbol that you'll see on some of the chemicals coming and corrosives. You also may see acute toxicity and specifically flammable, so for any of your fuels, diesel or gasoline used at your sites, you will see that flammable symbol on them. The transportation symbols are not going to change much for you guys. You'll still see those symbols used, oxidizer, flammable, so forth. But um, our numbers and the diamond that we've always used for transportation will stay the same. Um, the categories of chemicals will change somewhat. We've always had three categories. We're going to go to five. For you guys, um, then you just need to pay attention. That skull and crossbones doesn't just indicate a category one chemical. It will now indicate several le le uh, categories one, two, and three. The um, label will change, and it's important that you look at the label here, see what it has, uh, how they do the layout. They will now also have to be consistent. I think this is a great improvement. Again, looking at labels in MSDS, they change significantly. This shows you that the symbols will be in the top right um, hand part of it that shows what the hazard is. Um, the chemical will be on the top. Then you have a signal word danger, and then hazard statements on the left-hand side, your precautionary statements, and your first aid statements running down the page, and then finally at the bottom, it'll tell you what the manufacturer is and what their statements are. I think this is a great improvement, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that will apply there. First aid for exposure to chemicals starts with eyes. If you have any chemical that gets in your eyes, you must immediately um, hit it with water for 15 to 20 minutes. Um, it may, sometimes they have them blink and sometimes they have it op op to hold it open, but always you have to look at the label as what to do, but always get medical care after an eye exposure. Inhalation, first thing is common sense, get them out of the area, get them away from the area, get them into the clean air or um, where the fumes are not. Second, if they're not breathing, perform mouth to mouth, um, uh, basic life support on them, as long as you have protection from the uh, chemical itself and from also from their saliva or their bloodborne pathogens. So you need to have a guard or face mask for that. Third is if it's swallowed, um, you need to um, the, uh, call the poison control center if they're conscious, one. Two, dial 911 if they're not conscious. And three is that you would um, uh, not have them vomit unless the label tells you that you can. Many corrosives will say that you don't vomit because it burns going in and burns coming out. So it's key to understand these chemicals before you're using them so you know the proper first aid. And also, you may have a chemical that's poison. They may ask you to have the person sip water or milk as well. So those can be your um, reactions to and they need to be correct. So you need to look at these before you have the problem. Finally, skin exposure is the most common exposure. Typically it's a rinse with water for 20 minutes. So I want to make sure that you understand the three. Eyes rinse with water. Two, if it's breathing you get them to fresh air and provide basic life support if needed. 
three is swallowed, know whether you vomit or don't vomit, um, and then four is simply if it gets on your skin, make sure you rinse with water and seek medical attention for any of these. Thanks for joining me today for a Hazard Communication monthly class. You'll have a handout with this and I hope you enjoyed it. I really appreciate you um, listening today and have a great and safe day.